located about an hour and a half north of Atlanta in Ball Ground, Georgia, is beautiful Gibbs Gardens. It was created by Jim Gibbs, who was a local landscaper. Jim traveled for 15 years around the nation and the world, viewing gardens of every style, and he decided to design a world-class garden in North Georgia. So he found the perfect spot there in ball ground with this rolling topography, beautiful mature trees, and on a 376-acre house site, he created gardens that are over 300 acres. As you can see, at this time of year in the spring, the camellias are in bloom, the azaleas are in bloom, the tulips are in bloom, and it was just a beautiful day for Jamie and I as we went strolling around this wonderful garden site. I really enjoyed the koi pond. I always think those are cool. And one of the things I found really interesting as we were walking around was all the different languages that we heard. There were people from all around the world visiting these gardens. And of course, the highlight of the entire thing is the manor house, which is built on one of the highest crests in all of Cherokee County. And it overlooks the beautiful mountains of North Georgia. So if you get the opportunity, I would certainly encourage you to go check out Gibbs Gardens in Ball Ground. It's a really, really cool site and well worth the time. Now Gibbs Garden was beautiful, don't get me wrong, but right here in my own yard, spring has sprung. And we have all kind of beautiful flowers. I really love this time of year. It amazes me, the diversity of God's creation and the overwhelming beauty of what He puts on display when we don't even do anything. Some of these flowers came out of nowhere, and I love them. So for those of you who might have been wondering, yes, we did get kind of a second wave of blooms on the on the blueberry bush so see the bees are out active today and hopefully we will get some blueberries off of this thing another thing you might notice is that we've added some additions to the garden turns out that the owner of that restaurant didn't want these planters so well, now I've got little five points tags on planters in the garden, but we'll use them to, uh, to plant in. And it's almost that time. What you're about to see may shock you. It's the exposed, finally, of one of the great mysteries that men have been pondering for like forever, forever. That's right, this is a baby shower. Don't look at those women. <laughs> Men have never been exposed to such a thing. So now for the first time, this is what a baby shower looks like. I don't even see any water in here. I don't know what they're talking about. I've always wondered, the baby isn't even born yet. How are you going to shower it? Later on, there's going to be all kind of food, games, entertainment, and other nefarious activities taking place in this very spot. And there you go, that. And do we get this kind of food at home? No, we don't get this kind of food at home. Only at the baby shower. The baby shower. The, the secret shower. side. So all my life I've been watching people garden. Watching my granddad, watching my mom. And I've been gardening for years. It's one of the joys of my life. 
In my backyard, I had these two raised beds. And we decided to move those raised beds out to the front, which is not that big of a deal. And then that left me this space that I decided to make a corn patch. Now, I love fresh corn. The problem with it is it takes a lot of room. And so what I didn't want to do was, you know, take room away from the other things I want to grow in the front. But it'll be fun to create a nice little corn patch here in the backyard. I'm going to throw some okra in there with it, some crowder peas, and then see what I can do with it. Of course, once I've got the raised beds out of the way, then I can go clear off all the old debris, get it ready to till up. Every year when I pull out my rotor tiller, it makes me happy. It's a real memory for me, sitting watching my grandfather in his backyard, tilling up his garden spot, getting ready to plant. It's part of what spring is all about, preparing the soil for the seeds that we're going to sow into it, see what comes from that. I just love it. One of the things people don't understand about where I live is that there's this thing called Stone Mountain. Now Stone Mountain is about 60 miles east of me on the other side of Atlanta, and it's the largest single exposed piece of granite on the planet. But the rock that is Stone Mountain goes all under the state. And so every time I till up my garden, I pull up pieces of Stone Mountain and throw it into a pile to use for something else. It's just part of gardening in North Georgia. Like I said, pulling out my tiller, it just reminds me of my grandfather. He was a cantankerous old guy, but he loved to garden it too, as well. And I really believe that I got my love of it from him. And every time I plow up my garden spot, I, I think of him. I think about being a kid watching him out there working. And then I look over and see my grandson, Luke, watching me cool the way that connection happens. Once you've got it all tilled up, you just have to go out, of course, rake it off nice and smooth. And, and then I like to pull my garden up into rows. For corn, I decided to pull it up into tight little rows, you know, corn rows. Because corn actually is a grass. And so when you pull it up nice and tight, hopefully if we get a good windstorm, it won't blow it over. I've, I've had that problem in the past. This is kind of another experiment for me. And that's the fun thing about gardening. You try different things, right? Every year, I try something new. Every year, I do something different. Just so I can learn. Because experience is the best teacher. So, I'm really excited about this little spot. And I'm excited to see what I can pull out of it. See what can go into the freezer, to the canning jars, and of course just into my stomach as the harvest comes in. Spring is so much fun. I love the preparation. I love the dreaming. I love the anticipation of what's to come. Come here, Luke. That's Luke. Come here, buddy. Where'd you go? There you are. See, we're out here looking at the new garden spot. We're gonna plant corn and okra. Right, Luke? Uh-huh. Luke's going to be a gardener someday, too, aren't you, Luke? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. You heard it now. <sniffs> Say bye. Bye.
<laughs> well, it's Friday again, and here's the update. Spring break's almost over. I did a lot of stuff, did a lot of nothing. And um, what you see here is the impromptu wedding venue that we have put together. Uh, my oldest son is going to get married. They were trying to get to the courthouse, but it didn't work out. They decided to get married in our yard and let me officiate. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. And um, so me and my son-in-law and my wife worked to create this nice little space for their wedding tomorrow. Kind of spent a lot of time doing that. Also, as you saw, we uh, went to Gibbs Gardens. We um, worked in the yard, got my garden spots kind of ready to go, at least the initial tilling, did a bunch of that, and um, just life in general. So it's been a productive week. I spent a lot more money than I made this week, but that's okay. God is in control. I'm not too worried about that. And, you know, at the end of the day, we all need a break, so I took one. I don't feel bad about that. I don't feel guilty at all. I needed it, really did. And uh, for those of you who uh, kind of helped walk with me this week, uh, you know, it was not the easiest one. I, um, to be fully honest, I deal with some depression from time to time, and I kind of had a little bout of that this week. And I uh, feel like I'm on the other end of it now. It always helps to talk about it with some friends and certainly have some really good friends who are praying for me and uh, walking with me through it. So to you guys, I really, really do appreciate all that you've done for me. Anyway, looking forward to uh, hopefully a sunny day tomorrow. And it's not supposed to rain, but it's going to be chilly because it's Georgia. You know, it was 70 degrees a couple of days ago. It's going to be high about 56 tomorrow. So it'll be a, a chilly wedding, but it's not going to be a real long ceremony. So anyway, looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm glad that my son and uh, his um, soon-to-be bride, Grace, who will be my daughter-in-law, uh, have decided to go ahead and, uh, you know, get married for a variety of reasons. But they're all good reasons. It was something they were planning to do. It just kind of got moved up a little quicker than anybody was expecting. But it's okay. Anyway, I got a couple of more days, and then it's back to work and back to real life. You know, things are moving forward, and God is in control. Things are great. See you next time. Well, greetings, fellow travelers, and welcome again to another exciting adventure with the eclectic monk. I sure hope you're enjoying these videos and I hope that you'll take the moment to like them, to subscribe to the channel, to share these on social media and share it with your friends just by word of mouth. And what would really help me out is if you'd leave me a comment. Also, if you'd like to know more about what I'm doing, enjoy my podcast, check on my online store, different things, check out TheEclecticMonk.com. And there you'll find all kinds of other content and connections to other things that I've been doing for, I don't know, years. Anyway, I really do appreciate your support and I hope that you'll continue to travel well with me. Till next time, God bless.